My name is Elder and this is the new tutorial showing how to use tabbed content brick and blocks for to create some kind of filter for your product page. This is the request from Bloxmaster students and I think I've done a tutorial about this topic for blocks 3 but now that we have blocks 4 let me do the same for blocks 4 as well. So by the way this is the new template I have released. This is the old template obviously fashion but I rebuilt it from scratch using the completely new design and everything but it doesn't have product page so let's create the product page and inside here let's have the products title products and in addition to that let's add the content break under this title to add our products so tabbed content this is the brick I'm talking about and what I will do I will quickly put together a few products and I will show you how you can use this brick to filter between them to switch between them so if you just add this brick you will see that it kind of looks like that let's go to browser preview as you can see the area be behind below the links will change when we click on content one two or three so let's say that we have well i have some products here i think i have some images different color images green and well this is whatever it is pink well maybe pink for example let's make the filter based on color so this one will be green the second will be pink. It's not pink, but I don't know what's the color, what's the name of the color. And the first one will be all. And now what we will do, right now we have three links, as you can see in the sidebar here, one, two, three, and they are linking to three div containers. So inside we have some dem demo text. I will delete that for all of them like that. And all we have is, as you can see, three div empty right now. And when we click on each of these links, it will switch to the related div container. What we, what we need to do now is to add some kind of images, product images. And I'm not going to focus on design or anything. I will just put there the images, uh, the simple images in columns. So let's add a column. I will make it uh, maybe four width on large big point. It will be maybe four on MD, six on SM and 12 on XS. Well, this is not necessary for you, obviously, but if you want to build responsive websites, I recommend to do that right from the beginning when you build your layout. So uh, let's add a few images. Well, I will add one at the margin here and right now we are in all as you remember first one is all and right now we are in the first div which contains the elements for all tab so i will duplicate this quickly and replace the images so let's make it green let's make this pink again it's not pink but well let's make it pink and this one as well, let's make it pink. So I think five images will be good for all. So right now we have all green and pink. So obviously if we go to preview right now, we will have the all but green and pink will be empty. So what I recommend to do is build the perfect all tab. So inside the all we will have every product we have. And after that, all you need to do is just duplicate this row and drag it into two other divs and right now obviously we will have the same content in each of these but because we know that the second one is green we can just delete not green images for the second div and the, for the third div we will delete green ones so we will only have pink now if we go to preview you will see that in all we have all in green we have green and pink we have pink Let's do a couple of things to change the style a little bit. And for example, we can change the layout of this. We can add some margin, add some effects. And I recommend to use the default content brick classes. 
And to find them, you can just go to inspect element. If you don't have this in your Safari browser, it means that you need to go to settings. And I think it was somewhere in advance. Show developer menu in menu bar. This is what will enable that. And by the way, I'm using Ventura, so maybe it is a little bit different from what you have on the current version of macOS. Okay, inspect element. And using this little tool, we can select the area we want to edit. So for now, let's actually concentrate on the whole nav tab. And nav tab gives us this nav tabs class. So this is the first class we will work this. Let's go to our project. Let's add the class nav tabs. And inside here, well, first of all, what I like to do, I will go to display and set the display to flex. And from here, let's align it to the center like this. Let's go to the margin in padding and add some bottom margin to give it some space. And it is already looking better, as you can see. It is already looking better. Well, depending on what kind of design you want, you might want to have this line, you, you might want to remove it. If you want to remove it, it's easy. Just go to this nav tabs class and well, if you type zero in the width, it will remove the line if you don't want it. Okay, so now we have two more classes to edit. One will be for the link, another will be for the active link. So let's go a little bit further deep. So as you can see, we can kind of navigate like that. And inside this one, let's see what kind of classes do we have here. Well, not much. Let's go a little bit further. And right here we will have, I think, what we will have what we need. We have nav, nav tabs, nav link. This is the one we need to edit. So let's go to class manager, add the nav tabs, nav link class. And while doing so, it will ask you if you want to leave the spaces intact, we want. So let's quickly change something, for example, how the text looks and well, we can change the color for normal or for hover state. So if you want to have some different color on hover, you can do that here. For now, I think I will just leave it like that. We can maybe set the default size for this, something like that. If we want to have some kind of button design, let's do that actually. Let's go to preview. You can see that it is already a little bit better. And on hover, you can see we have this uh, button design. So let's actually go to nav bar, uh, nav tabs, nav link. And mm, I'm not sure if I want to use the button design, but if I don't want, I can just type zero here and it will actually get rid of the button design altogether. <clears throat> so one thing I want to do here is to change the active link, maybe make it a button, why not? And for the active link, you can see we have a little bit different class. So let's copy this, go to, pro to our product page here in the passion template, add this class, once again, leave spaces intact. And from here, Let's say that we want to have, well, color is black is fine. We can add, for example, borders here. Let's make them orange like that. As you can see now, it kind of works as we expected. Of course, we can change the colors, design, the radius of the button. But yeah, even as it is, it looks cool. One other thing I want to show you is that if you want to have some kind of animation for this, the whole diff for that matter, we can actually add the animation, for example, fade in. Let's try fade in and I will add this to all diff containers here. So they all appear without jumping, maybe a little bit more beautiful. You can see that it is kind of fades in. If you want something extreme, you can also do that. So instead of fade in, for example, zoom in. I have seen some websites using this. So if you want zoom in, you can add zoom in. Well, 
let's select the second div container and also change it to zoom in and as you can see now when we click between them it will kind of switch this this animation not perfect but if you want you can add this so that's it for this tutorial if you have any questions or need help is anything leave them in the comments below and i will do my best to help you thank you for watching i will talk to you in the next video